All right, y'all. ZZ the King. Like and subscribe. Add me on Facebook, Zach King. I got a special review for y'all today. But before we get into it, I got to introduce y'all to my oldest son. And today is his birthday. So when the video over, go to the comments, type happy birthday, Jacoby. Tell him how old you turned today, son. I'm 14 years old. 14 today. Now, my son also got a YouTube channel just like my other son who I promoted his channel. Tell them your YouTube information so they can like and subscribe. Dragon's Wing Comics. That's Dragon Wings Comics on YouTube. He do a bunch of bully videos, edits, Dragon Ball type stuff. So check him out. It's pretty dope. His subscriber list is going up. Now, I'm going to ask him one more question. Well, two more before it's out and I'm going to start my review. What's your favorite horror movie ever? Scream. Scream. The 1996 classic Wes Craven horror movie. And what's your favorite horror icon? Ghostface. Ghostface. And like I said, sometimes your favorite horror icon don't necessarily got to be your favorite horror movie, but most times it coincides. Like, for instance, mine is a Nightmare on Elm Street. They're, her, they're hence Freddy Krueger. Now, that's leading up to today's video, and I'm going to have a small little review at the end about the channel review in in the next video so without further ado i'm finna get to the video scream review wes craven let's go come on son so i can do the review quiet on the set lowered my seat all right let me get me right setting up setting up setting up the boy lowered my seat I had to adjust it. I'm good. All right, y'all. Let me get to it. All right. I just said it. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> this was written and directed by Wes Craven. He is one of the greatest horror icons of all time. He spawned the franchise of Nightmare on Elm Street. And after that boom era of the 80s slashers bleed into the 90s got stale, he reinvented the genre with this movie. And I always talk about great cast, the 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre cast or Nightmare on Elm Street 1. For some reason, Wes Craven make horror icon Final Girls like it's nothing. This is one of the top, I'm going to do the video about that next year, top 10 horror cast of all time. I'm going to be honest With this cast Everybody's iconic Everybody's legendary I didn't know about nobody on this cast But Drew Barrymore And I think Courtney Cox was from Friends So I was familiar with her from that Only from, you know, Entertainment Tonight Saying Courtney Cox is going to be in a new upcoming screen movie But other than that Her and Drew Barrymore was the only two I um, knew Before the movie came out Excuse me. I'm getting to the cast and I'm going to go. We got Nev Campbell. She is a top five final girl of all time. She's the birth from 70s to 80s to mid 90s to now. Final girls are most likely built like Nev Campbell, Sidney Prescott nowadays. Back in the day, they was more like Lori Strode or Nancy. Now final girls are written to be like her. As I mentioned, the great Courtney Cox is Gail Weathers. Her um, future husband is um, David Arquette is playing Detective Dewey. He also was the WCW champion if you into wrestling like I am. I mentioned Casey Becker was played by Drew Barrymore. She was supposed to be the star. We all know conflict of interest in the schedule. So she had to take the legendary first kill role. By the way, spoilers for the movie. We got Matthew Lillard as Stu Mocker. We got Skeet Ulrich as Billy Loomis. And we got the great Jamie Kennedy as Randy Meeks. Now, besides this being a horror icon classic, it was so legendary in getting away from the slasher, you know what I'm saying, psychoanalyst type killers who are basically supernatural. This was real humans. It spawned I Know What You Did Last Summer franchise, and it also spawned Urban Legend. Those movies was okay, but 
pales in comparison to um what we have here with Scream. Now, I'm not going to go through every plot beat and boing. I'm a cutting it down because I know my watch time and I got to be cognizant of that. Plus, I'm dropping another video, my last end review video next, and I'm done for 2022. Smoke and then we finna go. This movie to me is very meta. It kicks off with um Drew Barry Drew Barrymore character Casey Becker. She's at home alone popping popcorn. So now I don't know why she's popping popcorn as she finna take a shower, but the phone rings and interrupts her groove. And it's a creepy little voice. Ask her all kind of nothing anonymous horror horror questions like what's your favorite horror movie? What year did nothing? Who was the original killer in nothing? Friday the Thirteenth. Nothing. He probably asked that question in later movies, but I'm just giving you a synopsis of how it starts. He asks her all kind of horror movie questions. She play along with it. Nothing. Sort of flirtatious, but trying to nothing see if this a joke from somebody she know. So she ain't alarmed. Once she hang up and they call back, they get on some real vicious shit like, you hang up again, I'm going to kill your boyfriend, woo woo. They start saying like, I just want to know who I'm talking to because I'm outside type shit. They show a spotlight of her boyfriend. He gets gutted because she answered one of the questions wrong. Brilliant. So now her suspense is up. She like, I'm going to call the cops, woo woo. Because first she say, I'm going to call my boyfriend. And that's when they reveal, yeah, we got him and we killing him. She like, I'm going to call the cops. When she realized they serious and they in the facility facility they already got this mapped out they tell her the cops is gonna take nine minutes to get where you at well enough time for us to cut your ass up so it's a little minor chase where they you know what I'm saying we don't notice and i'm trying not to spoil things before i get to it so i'm gonna keep it suspenseful he chased the the ghost face killer is chasing her through the house. He finds a way to bust through the um glass and they're on the outside. As she calling her parents, they coming up the road. This is a nice suburban area in California. So you out there in the wood wooderland, I mean the wilderness. So as they get in the call from um Casey, you see the iconic scene of the ghost face killer chasing her with the ghoul ghost suit. He stabs her in her upper chest before he gets to fully gutting her and pull her guts out. Her parents are on the way home. They hear her screaming and dying. As they get there, they get to the back, see all the chaos that happened. She's strung up on the tree in the backyard, guts hanging. That's when we get a title card. If I tell you the first 30 minutes matter so much to get my attention personally, they got this shit for, for, for a franchise basically from the first 10 minutes because this movie grabs you instantly where you know already this is not, this is not a supernatural killer. You can feel these. This is a human. So the next day is when we get the cast. Like I said, we got um, Jamie, we got um, Sydney Prescott, we got Billy Stu, and who else? And that's it. Gail is the like weather. She's not the weather. I said weather. She's like the news reporter of the of the small town. So as they as the high school kids are gathering, they outside, you know what I'm saying, for lunch or whatever, they discussing Casey Becker. This is where the meta part happens. Cause Jamie is our character inside of a movie slash viewing. He know the ins and out of the horror. Like he need a YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? He's telling you. Did he tells um um Stu like you used to date Casey that make you the number one suspect in a horror movie so they just talking it gives you their personal traits because you see Billy is Sydney's boyfriend he kind of like scold Stu where you could tell he the leader in the group he kind of nothing handsome but bad boyish kind of personality um Jamie is basically the geek of the, of the group he don't got a girl and. He um like the fifth wheel type guy. He got a crush on Sydney, but they all high school friends. I'm assuming they've been all high school friends to all four years because they seniors now. So as the movie kicks off, you know what I'm saying? Once the 
news reporters and all that down, down in the school trying to find out information, that's when Gail character is in, uh, introduced. And Dewey is the like, he like the the deputy, you know what I'm saying, for the, the sheriff department. But his sister is also a high school student who's sitting these one of her best friends at the school. I didn't put her name in there. Woo woo. So that day, I think they like, yeah, we finna close school for a couple days. It's kind of hot. Woo woo. The kids are like, we finna have a party. You know what I'm saying? Throughout the movie, it's a bunch of well-timed jump scares. It's a bunch of moments where you see Ghostface in the um, grocery store stalking Sydney or in the backyard. That's how you know when you find out the crux of it. Spoilers. It's two killers in this will make it unique. Once you find that out, you like, oh, that's how he was able to disappear and reappear. It wasn't no spawning or a supernatural. It was two different guys at two different moments. So the movie progresses. It's great. Like I said, I'm not going to go through every plot beat and boing. As the party happening, this is like the midway point. They kill off the principal the day where school was shut down that day. They stalk Sydney at school the final day of school. It's not, it's not like it's summer break. It's just they finna shut the school down for a few days. They stalk her in the bathroom, almost kill her there. That's when they end up killing the principal later that um, evening after school was out. Now we get to the most iconic scene, the party, where all the students... And the student body from the school are at this party. They living like it's a college. Cause Sydney, at the very beginning, Sydney father go out of town on some business. So it makes you think he potentially could be the killer. Woo woo woo. When the, everything break down, but he's irrelevant factor in the movie. So at the party, they watching Halloween one, a uh, homage to Carpenter. That's when Jamie Kennedy, in my opinion, sets the movie tropes on his head. He like, there are certain things to do to survive a horror movie. No sex, no drugs, no alcohol. Don't say you would be right back because you won't be back. And that's when Stu gives the famous, I'm going to go get a beer. Should I get you one? He like, yeah, grab me one. He like, I'll be right back. That's my most favorite scene in the movie. I swear to God, I go to YouTube just to watch. Watch that scene. It's so iconic. And once he say it, the whole crowd, the whole party like, oh, it's just a brilliant moment. Joke comedian, comedic aspect that I don't mind in horror movies because this is meta. So it ain't scre I mean, scary movie comedy, but it. Ghostface even kind of goofy when he chasing Sydney. She bang his head with a vase. He falling over. He's jumping over couches clumsily. He ain't perfectly aesthetically pleasing far as a built muscular guy. He's a normal guy. And once we find out, he a high school student. So everything about the killer even makes sense. Now we get to the final fight where shit break down and Sydney becomes... I'm going to be honest, this off topic, but I got Laurie Strode as one, Nancy um, Thompson as two, I got Andy Barkley as three, and I got um, Nev Campbell as Sidney Prescott as four, because she is the definition of a modern final girl. As the final fight happens, is what I call the third act, her friend goes to the... um garage to the cooler to get some beers iconic kill she talking to the killer like man i know it's one of y'all at the party trying to scare me woo woo thinking it's a joke and so he put that blade in her ass once he cut her she dropped the beer i don't know how nobody heard it or would nobody was around but she's trying to escape through the um garage door that's like the dog door he raised it kills her iconic i'm looking at this shit i'm talking she is sexy as hell nipples hard perfect scene you get your little it ain't no sexy sexy shit even though nev breaks the code of sex with her virginity getting taken by um Billy, during the party. So everything breaks down. Ghostface gets a kill. They discover it. You know what I'm saying? That's when um Dewey and them shows up. Gail and them showing up for the report. Bodies is starting to happen. Like I said, the um opening kill. Then he killed the principal. Then this chick at the party got killed. They stabbed Dewey in the back. Now we see Billy... I mean, they, they, um, we see Stu and, um, Jamie 
both like let me in that's when nav pulled a pistol on both of them because she don't have a clue which one of them to kill her because at the store that billy i mean i keep saying billy jamie worked at a video store like a blockbuster and he know all about the tropes of all movies that's his job but especially horror at that store they come up on him threaten him billy and Stu, like man you talking all this shit about i'm the killer or he the killer you know all this you could be the killer and he like to be honest y'all right the nerdy guy who knows about psycho um, killers takes it to another level. I could be the killer, but damn it, I'm not. So everything about this scene is the payoff where Sydney don't know if her boyhood crush then went mad or her boyfriend best friend went mad. So she shut the door on both of them. Once you hear a little ruckus outside, Stu comes in all bloody. She lets him in. That's when Billy comes up and she finna shut the door thinking it's Jamie the killer. Billy comes up like, let me in. She let him in. Obviously, they just had sex. It's her boyfriend. That's when you hear the walkie talkie. She like, somebody thinks going crazy. He like, we all go a little crazy, Sydney. And this was to me on first viewing. I'm going to be honest. My IQ in 96 wasn't super high like it is now. I was shocked. I kind of thought even in my 96 mind, this wouldn't have been a shocker if they was the killer is what I was thinking. But it still was enough because, like, you got the girl. You having sex with the girl. Why are you trying to kill her? And that's when you hear the plot because it fucking thickens. This movie is brilliant. He like, yeah, your slutty ass mom who died had an affair with my father. I caught him. That forced my mom and dad to have a divorce. My mom left me. So now I'm damn near out on my ass by myself. You still got your father at least. So now it makes sense. That's his motive. I don't care if you like it or not, but it added up to me. To, from that day to this day, it still makes sense. And his name is still popping in the franchise 25 Five years later I think Scream 6 or 7 finna come out next year or something they just did another one my point is that's when they like we gotta make a plan they telling her they master plan master stroke how your dad did all the killing we was only one brave enough to stand up to him cause they pulled her dad out the cabinet they had him um kidnap the whole movie waiting for the final act so they like we gotta stab each other billy and Stu, to make it real he get the gut in billy billy like i'm getting woozy why they doing all that sydney escapes so now she know who the killers is she called him on the phone playing tricks what's your favorite scary movie like reverse psychology billy get to going crazy shooting at pillows and shit she creeps up get the drop on Stu, drop him knock a tv on his head kill him the final fight with Billy is a little more harder because um, Gail comes, shoots him. Then I'm he wakes back up. That's when Jamie, like the killer, makes his final rise for one last jump scare. He jumps up like, oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Sydney Doming, like not in my scary movie. I'm talking, that's when it cuts to the police and everybody there. All the bodies riddled, all the blood everywhere. Gail, fucked up face, bloody. Fix her hair, get the camera ready, because her cameraman also got gutted that I didn't even mention. That's like four or five kills. But she doing her report. This became, she became a reporter to a famous book writer after this. And a consultant to the movie Stab is a fictional movie made inside the Woodsboro Killings from Scream. Brilliant meta on meta on meta. Now, I ain't finna drum roll this shit. This is clearly a 10 out of a 10. Ain't nothing to say negative about this movie. I have no gripes. When I saw this in 96, I was thinking, this how the fuck you get Jason, Freddy, and Michael Myers, you know what I'm saying, the horror genre, to step their game up or reinvent the genre. This save horror, in my opinion. Because when you get to Leprechaun 4, Candyman 2 and 3, Freddy 5 and 6, all Jason's really to me, Michael Myers 6, even though the mask's great and he's scary, it's like this shit trash. It took Wes Craven to revive the franchise. Like I said, this is a 10 out of 10. ZZ the King, like and subscribe, your favorite horse channel, favorite horror channel, and I'm out.